I am aware that this is a sensitive topic. So let me explain why I say being black in Asia isn't for the weak-minded and why we all have a part to play to make situations better for not only ourselves, but for other people. Welcome to Four Seas, One Family. Welcome to Four Seeds One Family, where expats, immigrants, and migrants can share and learn about life experiences abroad. I'm your host, James Thomas, coming to you from Taipei, Taiwan, and I'm so glad to have you traveling along with me on this journey, and welcome to the show. When taking part in open discussions about race, racism, and sometimes class, we must remember that they have different interpretations, connotations, and historical references in different parts of the world and I will attempt to offer some reasons for why this is so. Specifically, when the topic of racism is a critical component for conversation, we have to look at it from an angle that allows us to understand and interpret the descriptions related to culture and race that are encapsulated cross-culturally. Specifying people based only on their ethnicity or cultural background passes on the baton of racism. And if we are to build better cross-cultural understandings, we must avoid presetting or promoting negative stereotypes. And as a result of globalization, people all over the world are crossing paths for the first time. Some people may have never seen or communicated with people who look or sound unlike themselves. Now, this occurrence may be seen as a shock, or at least at the very least, and inconvenience for some people. After the peak and the downward trend of European invasions and colonizations, people from underdeveloped and sometimes war-ravaged nations began to travel abroad to look for better opportunities, and many of these New World travelers had roots in Africa. Many Africans found their way into Asia and began their new life as well as scout for ways to formalize connections to build businesses and engage in trade. Countries in Asia like China, Japan, the Philippines, South Korea, Thailand, Vietnam, and others saw an influx of people from not only African nations, but also former colonizing countries who came with different cultural values and norms, which frankly did help speed up their economies, but also, in some cases, brought along occasional conflicts and periodic violence. As the economies of many homogeneous nations in Asia continued to rise, so did an increasing number of issues concerning foreign nationals ranging from overstaying their visas to getting involved in local crimes. Many Asian nations found themselves forced to deal with problems related to an influx of foreign nationals only first world nations had to face. Now let's fast forward to the present day. As noted, people from once colonized nations ended up in Asia, and most of the places had minimal experience with dealing with a large influx of foreign nationals and the forming of foreign diasporas. People of European ancestry were received enthusiastically, but in reality only tolerated because of an image they have of power and cultural superiority. Whereas foreign nationals entering from nations that are seen as inferior or less influential or perceived as people of low intelligence, barbarism, or seen as objects of scorn. And this negative image fell heavily upon people of darker skin and people of African descent. Also, the truth is, it appears that in some Asian nations, especially those that were once subjugated to colonization or lost wars to Western powers, a large part of the population subconsciously viewed their own culture as being of less global significance. For example, it is interesting to see people in Asia desperately avoiding the sun under their umbrellas, whereas in the West, people engaged in activities that help them gain and maintain a crisp brown complexion. Cosmetic companies in Asia heavily promote products that are set to keep skin unrealistically white. Keeping a bright and white pigmentation has become an obsession for some people in Asia, and this could be just one indicator of a white skin worship syndrome. However, there may be some other explanation for this, 
as confirmed by one of my former Chinese classmates. It was explained to me that a white skin tone is a status indicator because people who have dark skin tone are assumed to be people who do manual labor under the sun and therefore most likely are poor. So by keeping a light skin tone, it shows a separation between people who do outdoor manual labor and upper class indoor jobs that pay a lot more money. A flag that yells racial or cultural separation today is found in places in Asia where foreign nationals in general or black people specifically aren't allowed to go. And this isn't a well-kept secret. Restrictions placed on foreign nationals and people of color explicitly centers around negative cultural perceptions and stereotypes of outsiders who have or display different cultural norms. Honestly, there may be some factual reasons for this. For example, occasionally people from African and Western nations socialize and celebrate very loudly. When foreign nationals behave this way, they disturb local residents who aren't used to such behaviors and customs. On the other hand, people from homogenous Asian nations on occasions are also known to socialize and celebrate very loudly. For example, Chinese New Year, Weiya, the Japanese Penis Festival, I'm just saying. Now, at this point, I would like to make a quick mention about how observing negativity is hardwired into human nature. When negative aspects around us are pointed out repeatedly, we naturally become more aware of it and it becomes amplified in our consciousness. And this is where media plays a role in the negative portrayal of foreign nationals. And most of the negative depiction focuses on foreign nationals of darker complexion. Because the majority of the time, they are portrayed as aggressive and dangerous. And this is quite unfortunate. It also appears that a person's blackness is adjusted or at least purified by the color of the passport he or she possesses. An African-American's passport allows for much more leeway while living and traveling abroad. African-Americans, because of the color of their passport, can rather easily travel to and enter most nations in Asia with little or minimal hassles. And because of global acceptance, popularity, accomplishments, and recognition in sports and entertainment, some Black or African Americans receive a better level of acceptance abroad than their brothers and sisters from Africa. Apparently, money and fame is a universal disinfectant that, at least on the surface, cures all negative perceptions of people regardless of their skin color or place of birth. If you are a black person or any person of color in Asia, remember in many ways you are representing of not only yourself, but also the place you're from and the people who look like you. You must place yourself in a different mindset because people will stare at you. Some people may want to take pictures of you and in some cases a few people may even want to touch you to see if your skin pigmentation rubs off. Believe me when I say being black in Asia isn't for the weak-minded, and the desire to somehow become invisible isn't realistic. If you are an African, African African-American, or any person of color, here are some tips to help you assimilate and adjust to your life in not only Asia, but any place in the world where seeing a black person is uncommon. Take the time to learn the local language. When you communicate in the local language, you immediately minimize the chances of expressions being lost in translation. Also, people in the local community will be more likely to overlook any mistakes you make while trying to communicate with them in their mother tongue. Don't be surprised if you see any negative representations of black people in the local media. The perceptions of black people in the media are often exaggerated to conform to local stereotypes. Don't allow yourself to become disturbed by these negative depictions. Be the best representation of the person you are. By being the best person you are, you can demonstrate that black people aren't something to be afraid of. Show that people have a lot more things in common than they have to fear. And remember that technically you are an outsider. You may not be able to change the perceptions people in the local population have of you and of the people who look like you. If you find 
that regardless of your positive attitude and cooperative efforts, that your life has become more complicated where you are, go someplace else. Do not allow the ignorance of negative attitudes lower your value. On the other side of the coin, things are not all negative. There are parts of African and African-American cultures that are not only accepted, but also emulated in Asia. African and African-American music is just one example that has taken on a mainstay in both Korea and Japan. So this proves that some cultural exchanges can be shared, which can be used to break negative stereotypes. Here is a message that I would like to pass on to people from Asia. If you are a citizen of an Asian nation, please take the time to think about how black people or people of color are perceived in your country. Examine why people in your nation have stereotypes about people who look differently or who speak different languages. Ask yourself, are they fair and unbiased representations? There are good people of all nations, and to judge people based on their skin is an inaccurate representation of what's inside a person's heart. Please leave a comment below if you have anything you would like to say or share concerning this topic. And if you're watching us on YouTube and found what we have to offer of any value, please click on the subscribe and bell buttons below to keep up with our current episodes. And if you're listening to our podcast, please subscribe and help us spread the word that we have a lot more in common than we think. We're very interested to hear what you have to say. For Season 1 Family, I'm James Thomas in Taipei, Taiwan, and remember to take care wherever you are in the world.